take social responsibility on public investment. Short of a bloated military budget, they don't see much good in government, do they? The one percenters subscribe to the old the old trickle-down theory. You know the theory. The idea that if you if you sprinkle enough good stuff at the top and you take care of those folks with the tax breaks and the loopholes and the goodies, that eventually, eventually some of that'll trickle down to the rest of us. And I don't know about you, I don't know about you, my friends, but I'm tired of being trickled on. <laughs> I'll be in Texas for another week. Come on, man. I'm not driving the floor. You deserve better. America deserves better. Our seniors deserve better. Would you join me? Our children deserve better. Our students deserve better. Our families deserve better. Our veterans deserve better. America deserves better. And thank God you're here to fight for it. The unholy, the unholy alliance of Wall Street and Washington has failed to deliver for Main Street. That's the reality. We need a Main Street agenda in place of the Wall Street agenda. What do you say? Main Street, not Wall Street. Main Street, not Wall Street. these 
movements. I was first arrested on September 19th during the first march down Wall Street. I was arrested during other people's arrests when I called for officers' badge numbers. Now I made a mistake of locking eyes with a lieutenant and they don't like it when you look them in the eye and they called for my arrest. I was never read my rights, I was never told why I was being detained, and I was illegally searched. And I screamed all of this at the top of my lungs. You can YouTube it. <laughs> I was detained for an hour and a half. Luckily I had five of my brothers in a cell next to me, which helped keep my spirits up. But during that first arrest, I could not help but imagine what it would be like to be detained indefinitely in a system where I did not speak the language or I did not have rights to a lawyer. I'm a, pris I'm a prisoner's rights advocate, so I could not help but imagine what it would be like to sit in a cell indefinitely for the rest of my life. My second arrest occurred on September 24th when we took Broadway. Once again, there was an arrest. One of my sisters was taken. By this time, I had been pegged as an organizer and as a strong female voice that must be eradicated. The officers knew who I was, and they were out to get me. When I was calling for badge numbers, Officer Louis Pachenko shoved me with his forearms. And I said, don't touch me. He said, don't touch you? Oh, I'll touch you. And he proceeded to touch me for the rest of the day until I was out of his custody. I was sexually assaulted. There was a photograph of my breast being grabbed by two officers. I was covered in bruises. I was shoved up against a wall. And I was detained for over 30 hours. I was taken to Bellevue, which is a mental hospital, against my will. I was treated like a piece of transportable commodity. I had three officers who were little old me. They thought they got someone real big. So, I was harassed by correction officers. I faced racism and violence within the cell. I did not handle this well, this arrest. I'm a survivor of domestic violence and it brought it all back. So I do urge you to keep in mind, if you are when you choose your level of involvement at what exactly you are getting into, because it can be terrifying. I was released on September 25th, around 7 p.m. My brothers and sisters were waiting for me in the courtroom. I have an amazing lawyer, so I had support. But it did not go without taking a toll on my, my human spirit. That was only about 35 hours of my stay on Wall Street, the first nine days. The rest of the time, I was elated. I was ecstatic. I had never experienced anything close to that much human spirit and potential for change. Every day we marched, we organized, we spoke, we demonstrated, and we loved and healed each other. We came from all walks of life, from every corner of the country and even the world. It was incredible. It was the largest feeling of solidarity I could ever imagine. And I am ecstatic to share this with people in Michigan. When I was on Wall Street, every chance I got, every reporter, anytime I could, I said I am from Muskegon, Michigan, a city that had the highest unemployment in the country a few years back. And I will represent that city until my last breath. Just like we will represent this state. Because Michigan knows hard times. When you leave this state and you speak to people in the rest of the country and you say I am from Michigan, their ears perk up. They know that we know hard times. This is a state that capitalism has abandoned. And this is a time where the people need to come together and demand a change. No longer will we stand to be walked all over. We are not going to tolerate this anymore. We are an amazing state. We are the Great Lakes State. We are 
a backbone of America, and we must speak out. We have a tremendous role. So, thank you. This is incredible. I <laughs> Republican. 
There are 13 ALEC members in Michigan's House of Representatives. Dave Agema, Gail Haynes, Judson Gilbert, Ken Horn, Bill Hazinga, Elaine, Elaine, Eileen Kowal, Ken Kurtz, Peter Lund, Eric Nesbitt, Amanda Price, Mike Shirky, and Tom McMillan. Tom McMillan happens to be my state representative. He's so backward, he wants to make it so that we have a choice to buy incandescent light bulbs, even as they're being phased out, as long as they're made and sold in Michigan. There's only one problem. There are no incandescent light bulb manufacturers in Michigan. He's what I call a dim bulb. In the Michigan Senate, half of the members of, of the, half of the Republicans are members of Alex. Jason Allen, Darwin Boer, Bruce. Oh gosh. Bruce Caswell, Mike Green, Jeff Hansen, Dave Hillebrand, Rick Jones, Mike Kowal, Arlen Mickoff, John Molinar, Mike Knopf, Dave Robertson, and Michigan's Alex State Chair, Tanya Shudemaker. If we want to take back our government from corporations that, that bribe our elected officials to do their bidding, we have to make it politically poisonous for them to belong to Alex. When ALEC legislators hold town hall meetings, we have to attend and ask them questions about their relationship with ALEC. ALEC has invested almost $400 million in bribes in our state legislature, state legislators all across the country to get their corporate agenda enacted. There are now 26 states where Republicans control all three branches of government, making it even easier to get the ALEC corporate agenda enacted into law. In Wisconsin, the Koch brothers and Alec proposed and passed through his legislators a bill eliminating collective bargaining rights for public employees. In Arizona, Alec is behind the bill that had made it illegal to have brown skin so that private prison corporations could make more profits. In Michigan, Tom McMillan did the bidding of Alec by introducing a resolution withdrawing Michigan from the Midwest Greenhouse Gas Reduction Accord. He didn't even bother to change a comma. He took the resolution directly from Alec and introduced it in the Michigan legislature. McMillan also introduced a bill that would make it illegal for government to compete in any business that private corporations could do, including teaching our children. <laughs> Alec has a monthly magazine, Inside Alec. Their July issue has an article in it titled warming up to global climate change. They think climate change is a good thing.
achieving a moral, fair health health care system in America. I need you to keep fighting with me. I was very involved in the health care reform debate. I protested. I called my legislators. I wrote emails. Anything I could do to make a difference. I was even rewarded with a private meeting with President Obama in 2009. I promised him we would keep fighting for a fair health care system in this country. I need you to keep fighting with me. Health care reform did not go far enough.
need for productivity. The power shift. The power shift. We go from those seeking work. We go from those seeking work to the so-called providers of work. To the so-called providers of work. A series of laws. A series of laws. And train policies. And train policies. Passed by our lawmakers. Passed by our lawmakers. Some of us voted for them. Some of us voted for them. Assisted employers. Assisted employers. Moving our jobs. Moving our jobs. Overseas. Overseas. And that's not right. And that's not right.